Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Happy to continue with today's live sessions. Uh, so this is Mohammed Izayadi speaking on behalf of ESC Clermont Business School. And for now, we are gonna focus on one of the specialized masters that is proposed by the school, which is the MSc in International Commerce and Digital Marketing. And we will be having, so today, Balash and Samia as my guests. So hello to both of you. Hi. Hello. So if you could start by introducing yourself to the public. Yes, of course. So uh, good day to everyone, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Bola Siklos. I'm a professor of marketing here at uh, USC Clermont, and uh, I'm also responsible for uh, the MSc International Commerce and Digital Marketing. And uh, my name is Sami Morejon. I am a student of the master. I am from Ecuador, and I am one of the many international students here at the school. Thank you so much for this introduction. So, Balash, now we are going to be moving to the pitch of the program. So, could you pitch the program within uh, one minute, please? Yes, of course. So, uh, ICDM is basically about the four eyes. It is a program that is interdisciplinary, it's international, it's interactive, and it's individualized. What about interdisciplinary? Uh, it is an amalgamation of two major subjects, which is uh, uh, digital marketing and international commerce, because uh, we are not here to uh, educate uh, managers with a narrow mindset. We would like to open the world to you besides, of course, you knowing a lot about uh, digital uh, tools and digital methods. The second one being international, international on the level of professors from their origin to their experiences, but also international uh, through our students. They come from all different uh, corners of the world, from different nationalities. It is very interactive because you are going to have uh, more uh, projects and discussions rather than top-down classes. And it's very individual because it's all about your personal project to make it happen. Thank you so much for uh, giving in quick insight about the program. So for now, we are going to move within a few seconds to the questions uh, uh, to the questions section. We would like to remind you that you are, of course, very much welcome to ask us your questions direct on Facebook and on YouTube, and we would be extremely happy to address all your concerns and clear out all your doubts. So we had already received some questions from our followers. And we, uh, like I said, we are going to start by treating those. And then if there are any questions, of course, that are coming up in direct, we will be catching up with that. So the first question, Balash, that we had received from Rodrigo, what is the added advantage of mixing the knowledge related to both international commerce and digital marketing? So uh, it is absolutely a benefit for everyone not to focus on just one domain per se, but also to open their uh, view of the world to uh, other domains as well. Uh, and the international commercial amalgamation is, uh, is a great way to familiarize students with other cultures, with different ways of working together, uh, with uh, different uh, methods of uh, acting in a cross-cultural uh, setting. Thank you so much, Balash. Uh, moving on to the second question that had been asked by uh, Carl, that I'd like to address to Samia. What digital tools do the students get to uh, practice and learn about? Okay, well, uh, I think we're going to learn a lot. And first of all, you're going to learn how to manage social media, many, many different types of social media. At the end of this course, you're also going to learn how to create a killer LinkedIn page, which is really going to help you when you're looking for your internship. And one of my favorites, and I think one of all of my classmate favorites was website development. Here, you're going to learn how to create by code your actual website, which has been one of the most, uh, for me, the best class so far, uh, actually, because I really, learn. I did, never thought I would be able to code, and now I can code a website. 
And we're also going to learn a lot of analytics, how to measure those analytics and then read them and then put them to our, in our advantage when it comes to a marketing strategy. It's going to be Google Analytics and social media analytics as well. And we're also going to learn how to create our own blog. And I mean a blog that actually works, that has subscription letters, that has uh, videos, that has <clears throat> a lot of comments and a lot of stuff. Uh, and again, like a lot of just marketing strategies, but we're going to focus again on social media. We're going to focus on Google Analytics. And we're going to uh, focus on website development. Lovely. And uh, moving back to Balash, uh, of course, the, so when we are talking about uh, digital, we have to keep in mind so the, the crisis that we have lived recently, where we had to transform everything that we are doing into so a digital format. So what do you think is going to be uh, the competitive advantage that uh, digital marketing has post the COVID-19? The recent crisis, or the ongoing crisis for that matter, uh, to a lesser extent, of course, has uh, clearly shown the benefit and the inevitableness of, uh, of uh, digital tools. Um, there is no consensus on uh, to what extent things are going to go back to normal after the crisis is over. Uh, but uh, it's uh, fairly evident from what we see today that uh, the importance of, uh, of digital tools, of digital marketing, are not going to uh, disappear. I think people are going to be more willing to uh, interact with each other uh, via these means. And companies also have realized how important a well-functioning digital system, information technology system, uh, is in their activities. So uh, for the future, I would say that uh, that um, integrating into this program and acquiring all the knowledge and the skills that uh, Samia, for example, has already acquired will make it easier uh, for our students to uh, find a job later. If these are marketable skills. These are very well thought after uh, sought after skills that uh, for which the demand is only going to grow. Yeah, of course. So it's 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 in fact one of those uh, domains that is witnessing a boom because now companies have, no matter what their si their sizes or which kind of industry they're operating is, they will have to manage their processes uh, digitally and in particular to uh, be ready for uh, the upcoming challenges that we would face in today's very fragile uh, uh, business environment. Okay, moving on to another question that I'd like to address to Samia. What are, that we had received from Jim, what are the kind of commercial missions do you work on in this program or projects, for example? Okay, uh, we have uh, a special class just for projects, first of all. The first one, we worked in a program that was very uh, great. It was called Change Now, which means it's a big super event for entrepreneurs. So we work in the process on how to make uh, marketing a digital strategy for each of the countries because uh, our master is really full of like a rich international culture. So we worked in the Ecuadorian market and then we have friends working in the China market. We have friends working in the Mexican market. So is a way where you realize that all you learn can be put up in different uh, context uh, cultures and different countries. And then we also had a very great uh, project where we rebranded one a brand here already in France. Uh, we choose a sort of brand, my group. And that means that you create again from scratch the new social strategy for that brand marketing, not just digital, but also like a normal marketing. And uh, these are the two main projects. And also when it comes with digital, when it comes to uh, international commerce, we work in a project where you simulate uh, importations to a different country of a brand as well. And in this class, you're gonna learn absolutely everything that comes from the very beginning when you have to start seeing what your prices are going to be to the last moment where your client receives your product and then when you have to still making sure that this client that you're selling your product to is doing uh is having a good face for your brand i think these are the three main projects that we have worked on during the semester and that are very like it really makes you to work and get the, the experience that you're learning in class to actually put it to work 
Excellent. So as you can see, it's very concrete. It's really related to uh, the real life uh, missions that you would be working on later uh, after your studies. And uh, so as we have seen, so uh, Samia is coming from Ecuador, but this program is also characterized by a highly international uh, uh, involvement from students. So Balash, if you could talk to us about uh, the nationalities that are present. I know that this program does welcome a lot of students coming literally from everywhere in the world. Yes, uh, we have several nationalities uh, present in, uh, in the group. Uh, students come from all corners of the world. Uh, they come from Latin America, uh, for example, like uh, Samia. Uh, they come from uh, the Middle East, uh, Lebanon for that matter. Uh, they come from Northern Africa, from China, from India, uh, from uh, South Korea. So uh, really, it's a, re it's, a, it's a mixture of nationalities and cultures and working styles that, uh, that fits very well together in one group. Excellent. And uh, moving on to, um, to something else. So uh, upon finishing the program, what are the kind of uh, uh, career prospects or opportunities that would be awaiting for uh, the graduates? Mm -hmm. So the multidisciplinarity of the program will open many more doors to our students than a highly focused, uh, uh, for example, digital marketing program uh, would open. Of course, in the domain of digital marketing, there are uh, uh, different uh, possibilities uh, later on for our students to, uh, to get a job. They can, uh, as uh, Samia already mentioned, uh, they can work uh, in SEO. Uh, they can uh, work in, uh, as, as data analysts. Uh, they can uh, have a job as uh, social media managers. Uh, all domains of digital marketing, and which is a domain that is constantly growing and new opportunities uh, emerging every day, uh, are basically open on the on a uh, middle uh, managerial level at least uh, for our students and not to mention the other half of the program which is uh, the international commercial side uh, um, students can uh, be uh, uh, export managers they can be uh, product uh, managers uh, they can be international marketing managers again on the same level at a minimum uh, as with uh, digital marketing. So uh, the different uh, venues for uh, advancing their careers are, are wide and are there to all of our students. Okay, great. We would like to remind you that we are nearly halfway uh, through this session. So please, if you have any questions related to MSc in International Commerce and Digital Marketing, please go ahead and ask us the questions in direct through Facebook Live and through the YouTube Live, which is uh, being diffused directly now on both social media channels. Uh, and Samia, what is your professional project? So uh, you, now you are done with the course. What is your professional plan now? Are you going to do an internship in order to bring all what you have learned into practice? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I have worked during my time in the school as well. I am a social media manager freelance for an American company, and I do have some uh, clients in Ecuador, and I just launched my first French client, which is also very exciting, working in a new language. But I'm very excited to announce that I'm going to start actually my internship here at the school, at the SSS. I'm going to work with the international office. I want to implement a, a marketing strategy for more Latin students to be able to come to France, to this school, to learn all the skills that I have learned and more. And I also want to make sure that uh, we have enough Latin and Spanish speaker uh, countries partners in universities. And so I'm, gonna, I'm excited to work with you, actually, Mohamed, very soon. And that's my plan so far until December. And after that, I do have some uh, offers, one in Germany and then one to go back to Ecuador and uh, manage a company. So we'll see what the future brings. Yeah, definitely, it's great to, to welcome you on board, Samia, because I'm sure we will learn a lot also and have uh, different insights into the Latin American market. And this is a clear example of also the way that we value the knowledge that is uh, learned 
by our uh, uh, graduates. Me, myself, I was studying in ESC Clermont in 2015, 2016, and I decided to stay, and this school decided to offer me this opportunity. As you can see, so Samia is joining the team very recently to help us with market campaigns and expanding into the Latin American market. So yeah, I think that uh, the students that we have and the graduates of ESC Clermont are really the true assets that we own and that we possess here in the school. Okay, moving on uh, to another question that had been asked by Abdul. Does this program offer a January intake, Balash? Yes, we welcome new students uh, two times a year um, in uh, October, as all the other MSc uh, programs as well, but also in January. So uh, if you are unsure, if you can make it to France uh, or if you should uh, apply for the October intake, there is still plenty of, uh, of uh, safety net for you in, in terms of time uh, to, to wait until uh, January. We welcome students in both instances. Yeah, so there are two intakes, one that's starting in October and the other is one which is starting for Jan, which perhaps allows for more time for students who don't want to engage, let's say, during this period, they can push their enrollment later on to Jan. Okay, another uh, question that we had received from Hannah that I'd like to ask to Balash. So will the master's program allow me to do a PhD later on? Um, within the school, we do not have a PhD program, but the school is a founding member of a research laboratory uh, here in Clermont-Ferrand that does offer a, a possibility for our students as well with uh, the addition of some uh, more academically inclined and research related courses to later on uh, integrate into that uh, laboratory and start working on their PhDs. So yes, the answer is by coming to our program and by uh, completing it, there is a um, potentially open way. It's not necessarily for everyone. There is some selection process. But the potential is there, the possibility is there to do a PhD later on. Yeah, so it's possible, but through uh, some sort of a selection and a preparation program for the students who are selected for the process. But generally, like we have seen in the uh, one of the previous live sessions before, the goal of the MSc programs is more on the professional side. Students who really want to uh, integrate the professional and business world right after completing the program. Okay, and uh, Sami, I'd like to uh, ask you another question. Well, it was one of those questions that we had before. Uh, what are the requirements that sh students should meet before joining the program? Which means you, what was your background before coming? Was it business related or were you studying something else, some other different area that is uh, not necessarily tied or related to business? Yeah, I was actually doing communications and public relations. That was my um, my bachelor's background. But then I focused on digital. So I was doing social media management already for KFC Group back in Ecuador. I was doing contact manager and community management for them. And that was my main thing. What I Why I chose this master was because I felt that my digital background wasn't big enough so that I wanted to actually make it big. I wanted to learn how to work with websites. I wanted to learn more about Google Analytics. I didn't want to just be stuck on social media. And I think for me, it was this master has been very great because honestly, I didn't even have a marketing background as itself. Actually, I had extra lessons with the professor Ballage just for the basis of marketing because I knew it and I applied them, but I never really knew the, the theory. And so for me, that was my master, it was digital, but I wanted to be more in the wild digital part. But I do have uh, other classmates that, for example, my friend Yubin from South Korea, she has a completely international mark commerce background. So for her, it was also very good to learn um, about the marketing part. And for me, the international commerce part has been also like an eye opening and definitely something new. So I think like as long as you have an strong background in one of these two, uh, you are going to still learning more, even if it's already your background. And then you have something else new to look forward to that you can complete your uh, formation with. OK, that's great. And uh, Balash, so in this case, what is the typical profile that we are looking for when it comes to this 
program? Is it people who have some basic knowledge of marketing in advance or someone who's coming from a different background? Are they still able to, let's say, to join the courses? Of course, while doing more effort to catch up, but what is, let's say, the average profile or the typical profile that we are looking at? Okay, so integrating into the program is open to all kinds of people from all backgrounds. Uh, the common denominator that absolutely needs to be there is a good enough level of English. Uh, there are going to be debates, there are going to be discussions, there is going to be negotiation in the second semester going on. Um, and for that, you absolutely need a high enough level of, uh, of English. Um, but beyond that, um, ideally, of course, um, a student who would like to integrate into the program does have some kind of a marketing background or some kind of a commercial background, uh, but it's not at all obligatory uh, to have uh, either or even, uh, or even uh, both of them. Um, a business degree, even if you weren't specialized in any uh, of these two uh, fields, is already a good start. But uh, if you have a good project, if you are very motivated and if your English is, uh, is impeccable, then, um, then without a business degree, uh, without any background in either of these two um, fields, it is possible to integrate into the program. So we welcome everybody. Uh, you just have to uh, have a good, solid idea about uh, what you would like in life and in what way uh, this program can help you achieving it. Of course, to, to make sure that there is an alignment between your expectations and your professional project later on, which kind of uh, field you would like to uh, work in. Okay, uh, now we have started so receiving uh, some questions from our followers. So I'll take the chance to address the question that we received from uh, Yara which is uh, saying, can we pay the admission fee now and take the acceptance letter from ESC for the January intake and then start the visa process? The answer is yes, Yara. Once the admission fee is paid, we will immediately issue the acceptance letter, housing certificate, and all the other important details that you uh, would need or that you would require. Uh, the thing is, when it comes to the visa, as per the regulations, you can't start your visa normally um, more than three months in advance. I think that those regulations have been uh, changed recently, especially with the crisis that's going on. Embassies are providing more flexibility. They are so allowing students to apply earlier than three months, but I'm not 100% confident about it because it really depends on also the French embassy in Lebanon. So in this case, yeah, we would definitely issue the, uh, the documentation that you would need for the embassy, but we strongly advise you to check with the embassy directly what is the delay that uh, they require in order to apply, not too much in advance, but within enough time to be granted so the visa. So I hope that does answer your question. There is a second question that we had received from uh, Katie that I'd like to ask to uh, Balash. Is there an opportunity to learn other foreign languages if we already have a strong background in French? Um, not within the program. Uh, however, if you have already a strong background in French, then we offer the possibility for you uh, to, uh, to obtain the Voltaire certificate which is going to uh, give you a representation of your already great uh, French level that is highly appreciated uh, by uh, the prospective uh, employers. But uh, within the program, um, there is no possibility to learn any other language than, uh, than French. Yeah, well, of course, sometimes it's... Uh, it's a chance to practice if, for example, you have um, an existing base in Spanish and you have lots of students coming from Latin America, you can, of course, make friendships and then practice with them. But there are no proper foreign language courses. The main focus, since this program is also welcoming mainly international students, so their interest is really to develop their French 
uh, skills. But as Balash said, so even for those people who have an existing uh, base, a solid base in French, they can, of course, uh, uh, subscribe for this French Voltaire certificate in order to prove that they have a good level. So it will be, uh, they wouldn't have the need to follow the regular French courses, but to mainly focus on the certification in this case. I think we still have a few minutes that are left. So if there are any other questions, please go ahead and be our guests and do ask them uh, uh, in a direct manner uh, before we uh, proceed. So with the final part of the talk. And for you, Samia, in terms of the French language, how was the experience for you? Did you manage to improve your French throughout the program? Uh, thanks to those, let's say, French courses that are integrated? I think definitely <clears throat> it helps. But, <clears throat> sorry, if you really, really want to learn, you need to put more effort than just in the classes that we are receiving. And I really think this is uh, mandatory for every student that wants at some point find a job here. And just really to make a living at, like here, like even if you don't plan to stay here forever, but I think one of, as an international, one of the advantages of doing an international program like this is that you're able to learn a new language. So for me, and personally, it was a little bit easier because Spanish is quite similar to French, not really a lot, but it has some uh, similarities. So my advice, honestly, is first attend the classes and take them seriously, the French lessons that we are already given in the program, and then uh, really make French friends and watch uh, TV in French and watch movies and start listening to music, reading, and just put the effort on it because um, that's really going to help you when you it's time to find an internship and a job later. So don't take it slightly and take it seriously from the beginning if you are really committed to maybe having a life here after. Yeah, like we always remind students, we welcome all kinds of populations. So we welcome students who already have a little knowledge of French before coming. We welcome students who don't know even how to say bonjour before coming to France. We welcome students who have a good level of French, but really the, the ones who are able to succeed the most and to uh, have a good career later on, either in France or back home, because French can be very useful, even if you go back and work, for example, for a French multinational, it's really a big advantage for you and you really need to put the effort in it. It won't come automatically. There is a huge amount of effort required from your side. We will help you. We'll provide you with all the tools, with all the coaching, guidance, uh, even pushing you to practice French. But of course, the motivation has to be there from your side. Okay, I think now uh, we have covered the majority of the questions that we had in mind. Uh, if we have a few minutes left, if there are more questions, please uh, go ahead with it. Uh, and um, in this case, I'd like to also take the chance to ask Balash. Balash, do you have any sort of recommendation to give to the future uh, candidates? Um, maybe the most important recommendation would be to try and project yourself a little bit forward in time and figure out what you want your professional career uh, to look like in like five years and then match the program with that image. And once we are going to have that interview, which is inevitably going to happen if you are going to uh, apply, you're going to have an interview with me, then we are going to have a very interesting uh, topic to talk about what your dreams, what your aspirations are, and in what way our program can help achieving you uh, those dreams. If we are going to have such, a, um, such an admission interview, so to say, then um, instead of... Uh, you having no problems uh, or no uh, uh, no projects, no uh, vision for the future, and you will have a better chance of being selected. I can tell you that already. Okay, excellent. So I think we have come uh, towards the end of the discussion now. I'd like to ask you, Balash, for one last word that you would like to address to our followers. It can be 
a summary of the important uh, details related to the program. It can be anything that you can really think of. So don't forget that ICDM is all about the five eyes, uh, four eyes. It's all about uh, the interdisciplinary, the interactivity, uh, the uh, international uh, ma uh, nature of it, and your individual uh, project. And let me stress this individual project uh, a little bit more. The school has all help in place for you to realize it. Uh, you will have access to very uh, kind and very knowledgeable professors to their, uh, who are going to uh, offer you sometimes their network to help you out with that. You are going to have uh, help from the school to find your, uh, your internship. Uh, and of course, um, you are also going to have individual consultation on your CV, on your professional project, uh, to make it easier for you to achieve those. So whether you are going to apply for October or January, we love you all the same. You are definitely welcome to do so. Thanks a lot for this summary, Balash. Samia, if you would like to also provide uh, a piece of advice, the most important differentiation point for you to uh, have a successful experience in France that you would like to share with our fellow Latin Americans or with uh, uh, the, the people that are following us from everywhere? Uh, well, I would like to say if you have a dream and that is maybe come to Europe to follow your studies, if you really want to achieve quite high quality, quality education, uh, you should go ahead and go for it. If you have the possibilities, if uh, you're ready for the challenge, because it's really a challenge, you are moving completely from what is your culture, what is your language, your friends, your family, and it takes courage to come and to achieve it. So if you feel that you are ready, please come ahead. I quite highly recommend the school. And finally, I highly recommend the program. Honestly, for me, experiencing working digital is not just the future, but is the present. Uh, thankfully, during this pandemic, I think I have learned that when I saw a lot of friends and family maybe lose jobs, me as a digital marketer, I was never out of a job. I was actually getting more offers. So I think it's something we have learned for these as marketers, uh, digital marketers, is that we have chosen the right path and that digital is, as I said, not just the future, but the present. So go ahead and follow your dreams and we'll, we'll be waiting for you here. Absolutely. So digital is not the future, is the present. And of course, this crisis has proved the very same concept that you have shared, Samia. So I'd like to ask, uh, sorry, I'd like to thank my uh, uh, MVTs today, so Balash and uh, uh, Samia, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, before closing the discussion, we would like to remind you of a few important things. So the application process is still running till the end of July, 31st of July. Of course, for students who are interested in the January intake, we will push this deadline to perhaps the month of September because you still have more time. But we are talking now about the October intake. Uh, if you want to join our master's degree, so please uh, do the process as quickly as possible because we don't have much time left. And the application is done online through our application portal. It's consisting of the application file and the evaluation letter that's done by the head of the program. If you have any further questions, we would be extremely delighted to address them and to help you out with whatever doubts and queries that you might have, you can contact me by email, which you see over there on the screen. So I'd like to thank all our followers. Thank you so much for your involvement and for being there today. And thank you so much, Samia and Balash. And I'm really looking forward to also working with you very soon, Samia. Thank you. Me too. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. And we remind you that the last discussion is going to be conducted within 25 minutes exactly. We will be focusing on another specialized master's that's offered by the school, the MSc in project management. And it's going to be the same concept we would have. So the head of program, uh, Mr. Sebastian Dwyer, and one of our uh, graduates, Marina, who's coming from uh, uh, the same program. 
who's a graduate of the same program. So thank you so much for your attention and take care and we'll talk very soon. Bye-bye.